What's good, ladies and gentlemen? So welcome to another SK Wealth Academy podcast. Now, I want to expand on the topic from my previous podcast in which I explained the repugnant ignorance of conditional morality in just eight minutes. Now, I want to expand on this topic by talking about the upcoming presidential election among a couple other topics, but let's start with Kamala Harris. Now, I've seen lots of people of color on various social media platforms say, oh, we just need to oust Trump. So don't worry about anything bad that Joe Biden and Kamala Harris have done because it's a victory just to oust Trump. So let me ask you this for people that are saying this, because I think that's a very ignorant perspective. Was it a victory for people of color just to oust Bush and to elect Obama? I know for those totally disconnected from reality, they will think it was. But if we want to blame Trump for all the things Obama did to them because it makes us feel better, not because there's any truth to what they are saying, then go ahead. Because that's why I put that photo in the uh, repugnant ignorance of conditional morality explained in eight minutes or less podcast of similar policies that Obama and Trump did when he when it came to detaining immigrants very very similar but if someone was an Obama supporter it was okay when Obama did it but it was repugnant when Trump did it so I'm just saying that For those of us, and I think we all want to fix the problems we see in this world today, but we can't apply morality and ethics conditionally if we want to usher in the world that we desire. We must apply it equally because that's the only intellectually honest way to do it. Because, I mean, if we want to look at the horrible things that President Obama did, there's much to talk about that he did that was horrible. For example, he gave carte blanche to bankers to do anything they wanted and to commit literally, it's not even, I'm not even speaking in hyperbolic terms. He gave carte blanche to bankers to literally commit tens of thousands of criminal acts and have zero fear of ever going to jail because under Obama, bankers at HSBC They likely never even gave up laundering billions of dollars for the murderous Sinaloa drug cartel. A cartel that would chop the heads off their enemies and hang their headless bodies upside down from underpasses that were frequented with heavy, heavy traffic as a warning to everyone else because Obama refused, his administration refused to throw a single HSBC banker in jail, even when they admitted to committing these repugnant criminal acts. They knew, so bankers knew under Obama they could do anything they wanted. They could kick millions of Americans out of their homes, as happened under Obama after the 2008 global financial crisis, and not suffer a single repercussion, even though they were operating the same banks that kicked millions of people out of their homes under the worst financial crisis in our lifetime that will be superseded under Trump if he wins again or whoever or Biden if he wins because the next financial crisis that precipitates is going to be far worse than 2008 but they were kicked out by banking institutions that were operating as disgusting revolting criminal rackets themselves And Obama and his administration made sure nobody would be prosecuted and nobody had any fear of being prosecuted. So say what you want to say about Trump. And you know, if you watch my channel, there's tons that disagreed and called Trump out for just being, just having terrible ethical, like moral implications. Okay. But at least his administration has the balls to finally prosecute some of these banking criminals like HSBC forex trader Mark Johnson, like JP Morgan forex trader Akshay Ayer. Ayer. And right now, under the Trump administration, the Department of Justice 
is actually beginning hearings for civil enforcement action against two former Deutsche Bank precious metals traders for spoofing the markets and manipulating gold and silver prices lowered. And these two traders are James Vorley and Cedric, Cedric Chanu. And in fact, James Owen Vorley was one of two Deutsche Bank directors on the London Gold Market Fixing Limited and the Sil London Silver Marketing Fixing Limited. So he was one of the bankers that was directing the buy daily fixing of gold and silver prices every day. And he was one of the ones that was found directing spoofing of gold prices. And at least the DOJ is going after them. When we knew, because I, and maybe actually if Trump were president, when I actually gave data to CFTC, CFTC which is the Commodities Futures Trading Commission commissioners back in 2008, of their spoofing, I gave specific data that showed how markets were being spoofed by bankers and gold futures markets in New York City. Maybe as a whistleblower, I would be retired because I would have been paid millions of dollars as a whistleblower for proving that gold markets were being spoofed back then, as I 100% knew they were being spoofed. But under Obama, nothing happened. The data I was given to the CFTC was dismissed, whereas at least under Trump, the DOJ is going after them. So maybe if that had been proven, and Trump was president, when I actually gave that data first, more than a decade ago, I could be retired by now because I would have got a multi-million dollar payment as a whistleblower for criminal wrongdoing in the financial market. So there's plenty of things that Trump has done, don't get my message twisted, that I've already pointed out that I think is morally wrong. And people think I'm petty for pointing out facts because they will say, well, every U.S. president is corrupt. So isn't that a little petty pointing Trump is corrupt too? If you think I'm petty for pointing out facts, then you need to re-educate yourself because your critical thinking skills suck. And then when I criticize like the Clintons for being involved in all kinds of criminal rackets. By the way, Hillary Clinton gave a speech at Goldman Sachs saying, don't worry about me publicly saying I'm going to go after bankers because I have one stance that I hold privately, which you're hearing now, which I'm never going to come after you. And another public stance, I will tell people in order to appease the citizens. So Hillary Clinton sucked too. And those including, and, and the Clintons expressed their undying love and support for pedophile Jeffrey Epstein. So Clinton supporters must have lost their minds for those that get mad when I criticize Clinton. And then when I, again, if I criticize Obama for his crit criminal activities that deserve to be called out, Obama supporters lose their minds. So I, So I can't stand when people express outrage when those of us are just exposing facts, whether it's facts about Trump, facts about Obama, facts about Clinton. Because for all these people that have this conditional morality, which I will state again, is no morality whatsoever. You have no moral framework if you're going to change your morality depending upon not the behavior itself. You're not going to judge the behavior as immoral or moral, but you're going to judge the behavior as moral or immoral depending upon who is committing the behavior. That is spineless, 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 gutless type of behavior and zero morality. And for those people that do this, then you should love drug lords like Pablo Escobar as well because the hundreds of judges, lawyers, and Colombian citizens and Colombian journalists he murdered should be irrelevant, irrelevant to how you judge him because, you know, he built dozens of football fields, dozens of community centers, dozens of hospitals, dozens of schools, even dozens of churches in Medellin. So you should praise him for that. He should be an angel 
in your eyes because it's the same highly flawed non-intellectual methodology of interpreting behavior that's led people of color to comment on social media that they love Kamala Harris because she's part Jamaican and part Southeast Asian and we've never had uh, a vice presidential candidate of this type of diversified ethnic background so we should elect her just because she's a person of color. Well, if she had the integrity of a Patrice Lumumba and a Muhammad Ali, then yes. But since her moral compass is horrible, no. Because as a person of color, she has expressed her advocacy for locking up brown people, for locking up black people, for minor infractions like truancy, while letting bankers commit far more abominable crimes on the spectrum of criminality. And you know what her reason is? She is she's all record publicly stating, well, I'm not going after these bankers that have committed criminality for decades for decades because I don't want to deal you know there's mounds of paperwork you have to put in to put these white collar criminals in, in, in prison I don't want to have to deal with that so there's no justice I'm going to enforce no justice but let me put the people of color that can't afford lawyers so there's no paperwork for minor crimes like truancy I'll go after them. So if you don't know why I can't stand Kamala, why I can't stand that creeper Biden, why I pointed out some of Trump's terrible acts in the past, well then, lauding some of the good things he's done, you missed the entire point, which is that conditional morality has no morality at all. We need to look at each behavior by itself and say this is what we need more people to do it doesn't matter if you hate the person if that per person does something good then you should laud that behavior because you, we should be saying we need more of this behavior and then even if you love someone if they do something horrible like if they commit murder against an innocent person are you going to just continue to laud that person as an angel? But far too many of us stop viewing an act in itself as good or repugnant. But we want to know who committed the act first before we decide if the act is good or repugnant. And that type of behavior has to stop. Because the outcome of a system, as I will get more into detail in podcast 140, is exactly what the system is intended to do. So I'm really tired of people failing to understand this super simple point. So let me just illuminate it with a simple example of the U.S. Central Bank. The U.S. Central Bank, aka the Federal Reserve, had destroyed the purchasing power of the U.S. dollar by 99% since they legally came into existence in 1913. Therefore, the purpose is to destroy the U.S. dollar. So I can't understand, for example, American expats that I've met that live overseas are so smug in their assessment that the dollar will remain the world's strongest currency. Because to them, I say, hey, dumbass, ever hear of gold? Because gold's a currency too, silver's a currency too, and they have far outperformed the U.S. dollar since 2016. And then more information just came out this past week through a leaked report from FinCEN, which stands for the Financial Crimes Enforcement Network. The big U.S. and U.K. banks have been acting more like illegitimate criminal racketeering operations than legitimate businesses for decades. And they've been laundering money for violent murders, drug cartels, as I've already mentioned. Not only that but for Al-Qaeda terrorists. So congratulations to all you people that I constantly see commenting on various podcasts. Hey, I'm not gonna give up my bank stocks because they've done well for me this year. Congratulations for being a supporter of terrorism and murderous drug cartels because that's exactly what you are if you're holding stock in JP Morgan, HSBC, Deutsche Bank, Standard Chartered, Bank of New York Mellon. This is exactly what you are. You're supporters of terrorism and don't pretend to be these uprighteous people. I don't care if you go to church every 
weak. If you know this, you're a morally repugnant person. And what happened with this FinCEN report is that more than $2 trillion worth of transactions between 1997 and 2017 were flagged by their internal compliance departments as suspicious. Meaning something's fishy about these transactions, probably not legal. And back in the Bernie Madoff days, even JP Morgan's own internal investigative team, you know, that's like internal affairs with cops, who always investigate cops for murdering innocent civilians and always clear them of any charges. And no cases are ever brought against these cops. That's like you would not expect a bank's internal investigation team to bring any heat or to clap back against their own employers. But they said back then they were laundering money for well-known drug traffickers and businesses that had dealings, documented dealings with North Korea. And you know why I trust this FinCEN report, which by the way, outed people like HSBC, CEO Stuart Gulliver at the time, still CEO of JP Morgan, Jamie Dimon is complete frauds complete snakes because Jamie Dimon said hey it's the mark of an organization of how we respond to bad behavior because they said every company's guilty of bad behavior but we're cleaning this up and he said that like over a decade ago and FinCEN said no you didn't FinCEN just just released a report saying JP Morgan willingly willingly worked with drug cartels Mafia bosses, terrorists, since Jamie Dimon made that public statement. And also, I put a lot of credence in that FinCEN report because Martin Woods, who was a UK drug laundering investigator with decades of experience going after drug launderers, he was the one that outed HSBC for laundering all that money, that 880 million dollars which likely that was only the amount they caught was likely much more than that for the uber violence in the lower drug cartel and then after Stuart gulliver who was the hsbc ceo at the time said whoa i didn't know anything about that it's like how could you launder 880 million dollars in cash drug cartels are 100% cash business. $880 million of cash is being laundered through HSBC. They don't know, no, man, GTFO, Stuart Gulliver. That's exactly what Martin Wood said. Martin Wood said, after looking, he said, there is not 0.1%, not 0.001%, not 0.000001% chance that the very top executives of HSBC did not know they're laundering money for the Sinaloa drug cartel. Martin Wood said there was 0% chance the top executives, which meant that the DOJ, Department of Justice under Obama, should have gone after HSBC CEO Stuart Gulliver. Should have arrested him, made him testify, and put him in prison for a very long time. But of course, no. Can't put any bankers in jail. You just let them walk away scot-free. And again, I'll put all the links below in the podcast show notes for you to go check this out. So that's just what I wanted to do as a follow-up to my to podcast 141. Let's we'll just talk about what came out this week in regard to all these big banks continuing just to give us lip service saying, oh, we're cleaning this up. They're not. And they know they're not. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching. Stay strong. Shine light upon darkness. And as always, keep the good fight alive. Take care.